Hello, most needing a deadlift in 3 minutes and 30 seconds. This first vis is just a visual of a good deadlift, a wide leg and narrow leg. First thing is tension, then it's hinging, meaning hips go back. You don't have to reach back to the bar. Hips extend at the same rate the knees extend. The bar goes over the center of the foot. Think where the laces or knots tie or where a Mary Jane strap goes. This is not correct. That's where your toes are. Wide leg, this is what it would look like. You want it over the center of the foot. Weight has to travel straight up and down. If it's not over the center of the foot, it's going to pull your body weight forward or backwards. You want the bar directly over the center of the foot, whether you're wide feet or narrow feet. The wider your feet are, the more you want to turn them out. The stance for this is irrelevant. Once your feet are set, you want trunk tension, then you want a hinge with a neutral spine, then knee bend. Bar travels straight up and down. We're looking for no deviation in the spine. It is true that if the spine rounds or you get some flexion or extension, you can pick up more weight. But that's not for novices. That's not for people unless they're competing or they're really high level athletes pulling two or three times their body weight. It's really important to hinge. Once you hinge, then you can come straight down. You can, you can keep that spine vertical. Once you start to learn how to do that, it sets you up for your Olympic lifts or your squats. It's really important to hinge first. Hinge. Don't let the knees collapse. Doesn't matter where your feet are in their width. If the knees start to fall in, you're going to tear up your hip, your knee, or your ankle, or even your low back. Even if the bar travels straight up and down, if the knees come in, you're, you're screwing up actual performance. Keep the knees wide or over the ankles. Looking in the mirror is not your friend. Rounding your back is not your friend. It doesn't translate to, to functional movements later. Now, should you be able to round your back and pick something up? Yes. Do you want to train that way? No. That's your, your emergencies. That's your where you can end up. You should still be able to have enough trunk stability when you pick up something with a slightly rounded back that you're okay. Don't train that way. Hinge, reach your butt back, reach down for the bar, not back for the bar. Reaching back for the bar is not your friend. So this is how a lot of people end up lining up for the bar. They got that rope coming back, that's going to be a kettlebell. So when they lift the bar off the ground, it swings forward. That's what it's doing to your body. When you're picking up a large load that's going to tear up your low back, that's going to pull you to the front of your feet. When you translate into squats, when you translate into Olympic lifts, it's going to throw you off balance. It's going to tear something up. This is what happens. It's because they didn't hinge first. Pick your ass back, stripper butt. A lot of air, put it into your trunk. That's what trunk stability is. Get as much air as you can into your body. Next thing people do is they try to jerk it right off the floor. Load your system before you start moving fast. Load it, and then you can accelerate. Alright, thanks. Have a good day. Enjoy.